I know you're very busy, um, and I know you're very popular, so I really appreciate the fact that you... Oh, no, I'm <laughs> not popular. <laughs> you, you have a large following. Well, um, yeah. and, and what you... can I say? I come from populated <laughs> parts of the world. I don't come from uh, Allah's Arabia, so... <laughs> yeah. But it's still not enough people, I mean. You got to teach them... Send them all to India and China, they might come back more fertile. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what, okay, what... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, you have, you have a TV, you had a TV show in India and it was one of the biggest watched rated TV shows in, in the world, isn't it? Like, the, your pro... Yeah, your... I, I, it surprised me. Um, I, I, I didn't realize the, the the latent, um, you know, capacity uh, or latent um, need just under the surface mm. among uh, just ordinary kids, uh, like 14, 15 year olds or, uh, or, or the age brackets were, fift say, uh, 15 to 20 or, uh, you know, seniors, 50 plus. Wow. If it's everybody wants to be a CEO in India, you know, I'm going to be rich. <laughs> so they <don't> have anything. <laughs> so, so what, what do you think, what, what are you t saying that you think is resonating with them and that there's such a demand with, uh, for such, an, um, such a message that generates such an audience? I, I basically ask the questions that um, have been largely uh, suppressed uh, the same way as they're suppressed in the United States or Britain or France, wherever there is a, say, uh, a substantial Muslim minority, um, the question gets suppressed, uh, which is a very ordinary question. I mean, why are you polygamous? Like, do you have an identity crisis? I would ask this way. I mean, why do you like girls? rather than girlfriends. You know, <laughs> it's very simple. Uh, you like girlfriends, go out, find someone, date and marry. No, you like uh, Arabs to fly over and buy 15-year-olds, Indian girls who then get married and uh, just left behind for a payment to the family, and this is happening. And people were shocked that I asked that question because usually, um, uh, Muslims become uh, patriotic, like it's the hotspurs or, you know, I'm uh, against Manchester United, you know, they have a patriotic uh, flag bearing, this is my Islam. Tribalism. Yeah. 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 And non-Muslims, I'm sorry to say, are so scared of Muslims. <laughs> If I ask the wrong question, what's, what's Abdul going to do? <laughs> so they don't ask the question, so, but any rational person would have questions, what's going on? Right. And we made sure that all the participants were Muslims. Mm. So there was, there, there was no question, oh, no, no, this is a Jewish agent or, you know, some uh, Hindu nationalist. I invited anyone, in fact, one of the young women who came uh, on the show and is now a regular on Indian television, uh. I just met her in a coffee shop and I said, you know, she she wanted to have a, uh, what's called selfie and I said, fine, but if you're talking these issues and you're an Indian Muslim, uh, you're single and you're in your maybe early 30s, why don't you come? And she, she absolutely tore into everyone because, uh, first of all, she was very highly educated, was an urban professional, and the image of a Muslim in India is somebody, you know, bent over slightly with either they are Bollywood stars or they are in burqas. <laughs> but this woman simply proved then a lot of pe uh, women came. Mm. 
and it, it was a very pleasant experience. But you say you say you're you're inviting only Muslims, but a lot of times uh, many of these Muslims are accused of not being Muslims. I, you also get accused of not being a true Muslim, don't you? No, uh, well, I don't care what people yeah. say, but yeah. my guests were imams, mm. uh, mosque leaders, president of the Indian Association of Ulama, you know. Right. But uh, they are shown so much reverence, I mean, uh, in our part of the world, that uh, nobody dares ever raise a question to them. Mm. And uh, uh, in the second question, this guy uh, just flipped his lid and said, your daughter is having babies with a Jew, like <laughs> on television. <laughs> yeah. For a second, I said, "Oh, I wish Natasha hears about this because she doesn't have a baby." <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, you go to the depths of the gutter and see yeah. on television, you say, "Hey, your baby, you, you know," and he took the name of my son-in-law. Oh, Chris is a Jew. I said, oh, who's going to tell this idiot? Chris's can't be Jews. <laughs> that was too much. But actually, that's very interesting because I, a lot of the insults I get from Muslims uh, that are offended is not directly towards me, but towards women in my family. Like they, they say they make rape threats towards my mom who's already passed away towards my wife towards my, towards so. my sister <laughs> that i don't even have towards my daughter that i don't even have but th why is it why is the woman in your life uh, in our life such a target for um of attack of insults is that is that something common i i i i've wondered about that and i feel that contemporary islamic societies do not permit the mixing of genders at the primary school level, uh, you know, in KG or uh, simply class one or two, of what to speak of higher up. So these are men who have grown up, who will in all probability have an arranged marriage to a first cousin, which is traumatic in itself, if not arranged by the mothers. So imagine a grown up Muslim guy in his mid twenties is going to his mother to say, Mom, can you get me a girlfriend? That's essentially what he's saying. Now, if that's the normative, you have serious identity problems in terms of sexuality, leave aside everything else. So a woman is the aura, the aurat, or the in fact, in Hindi or Urdu, uh, the word Aurat is neutral, but if you take it from uh, the Arabs, it is the source of all sexual lust, uh, which is crept into English as well, the aura of things, you know. And I think it speaks to a deep sexual problem uh, in contemporary times in the urban classes. In the village, you know, everybody can hide in a wheat field and you know, once the woman gets pregnant, they look for the man, he gets beaten up, then they get married. But the two have met each other, right? You can't work in a, a peasant uh, environment or a farmer's field and not know the other sex. But in urban, oh, these are the, uh, uh, what I call the virginity guards uh, of Islam that sit there, the younger brother, the older brother, the uncle, the grandfather, the father. And there you have it, insecure people, insecure about their own sexuality and uh, which is expressed in how they, in terms of war, how they've raped Yazidi women, how they've killed uh, women in Afghanistan. Uh, there's a hatred towards women because it also sends the signal that my lack of accomplishment in the last 500 years is because of you. Unexplainable, but it's there. Do, do, what, what do you think is the source of these problems in the Islamic community? Do you think it has something to do with Islam itself? Islam was very sexually permissive religion. I mean, everyone dated each other. I mean, uh, even starting with Muhammad, Khadija proposed to him. Uh, she was twice divorced. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to my mom and send uh, some 
relative over to your parents. Uh. She said, you're a good looking guy. I want to marry you. You're my business fellow. I mean, this is pre-Islamic days. I said, that's fine. And they married. And then she died. That's of course. Uh, but um, uh, everyone else's terms, you see, women are not behind the curtains. This is a very uh, sort of, uh, I would suggest, uh, Occidental, uh, a Damascene aspect to Islam that came from the, the Persian nobility and the Byzantine nobility that the women uh, of nobility has to ride a horse with a veil. You still see Jackie Kennedy wearing a black veil and I said, wow, that's a sexy burqa, you know. I have no problems with that. But it came from there in the Arab world, for goodness sake, they didn't even have cloth. They didn't manage, oh, I'm going to the textile mills, let's buy some linen. It didn't happen. They didn't have paper, they didn't have clothes. But the, the original um, mention of hijab was in the Quran wasn't even about a head covering. It was no. about Muhammad trying to produce a, remove, put a cover between his wife and people coming into his house, correct? Like, and uh, the, word, yes. the word used for that is also could be meant to be a covering on your head. So that, Absolutely. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, the word, by the way, hijab, mm. was not in the vocabulary yeah. when I was living, uh, when I left Pakistan in 1979. Hijab meant uh, uh, haya, sharam, you know, shyness. It was uh, not associated in our culture. Nobody wore this, <laughs> this uh, strange head wrap. Uh, people would wear saris and throw their the extension over the head or something if you might recall called a dupatta which is which literally means two pieces two straps right. and it was a multi-purpose multi-religious piece of cloth from the Punjab uh, for uh, women in the farming business yeah but but the argument is that Muhammad's way of life should be a ro model for Muslims to live so if Muhammad didn't want his wife to be seen by others other people should also avoid their wives being seen by others as well. Yeah, there, there are two arguments to this. I don't know what Muhammad said or did. I dismiss the entire notion that I would ride a bicycle from my home to the corner store and then you would come up after 300 years say, I think it was a multi-gear bicycle. No, the other guy says, no, I think we need to sit down and have a shura and discuss what sort of a camel did he ride? I mean, for crying out loud, who wrote? Uh, you can uh, come, in, uh, come down to the bare necessities. The Quranic uh, verse says the wives of the prophets are special category. Even if I were to assign them, that itself negates that. But the wonderful part is that it allows us to challenge and set aside some of the aspects of the Quran if the Hadith does not exist. If I'm saying that the uh, life of the Prophet, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Sirah uh, of the Muhammad, written uh, I think in the late 1800s, to validate the Hadith, which was written in the 700s, huh. to validate the Sharia that was written. I mean, we're going backdated accounting fraud in 300 uh, years. Right. So, if you go to the other side and say, yes, Muhammad did this, then you validate uh, the very mullah that I'm trying uh, to say. No, my point is, let's go to ABC. How was it revealed? Oh, the, uh, if somebody says, yes, it's revealed, the Mutazalites said it wasn't revealed, it was a uh, book of wisdom written and created by Muhammad. I mean, this happened in the 800s, I think, before the Asherites came and slaughtered everyone else. But the point being, if God sent verses down and somebody who couldn't read said, I think I'm going to rearrange these. And then you have the whole notion of abrogation, but you don't know which verse is where because some guy 30 years after Muhammad's death said, bring everything, we're going to have a bonfire. Osman. Yeah, he burned 300 
Quran, so crying out loud, and he's your hero. So that gives me permission to say, the least I ask for is give me it, give me the story in chronological order. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Yeah, I can't start from the hill. Jack and Jill are approaching the hill from the northeast side. Please don't insult my intelligence as a human being to suggest that as the prophet was receiving these revelations, it said, read, read in the name of God that created you. But you open the Quran, it's not there. How is that acceptable to whether one is an atheist, a practicing Muslim, whether is a Catholic? I, my first thing would be, you just said this is how it started. And then you said, but it's not there. How can it be possible? What is, what is not there? Which part is not there? The, the first word, revelation, okay. is Ikra. Ikra basmik Allah zikhala. Yes. Fain, fain Ikra basmik. Here's the Quran. I even have the, the study Quran, Sayyid Hussain Nasr. Who's the, I can't find it. You find it offhand like this. I'll surrender. <laughs> But, but we do but we do know the orders don't we like right we don't we like i don't know for for some weird reason osman decided to big the, put the biggest verses at the beginning yeah, and the smallers at the end um why which was bad marketing you would think you put the no, shorter ones at the beginning yeah right yeah doctor yeah. that guy didn't know what a book was mm. arabs never had a book arabs didn't have paper <laughs> all the quran was written on bones on skin, on parchment. It was a memorized. It is like the Vedas transferred on for thousands of years in India. Uh, the, uh, they are by memory. Right. It didn't have paper, period. The Chinese just came a bit late and you didn't have ships coming over to Port of Jeddah unloading paper for the factory mill to like the Saudis are producing the Quran and they're putting in their own uh, meanings at the footnotes. I have three editions here mm. and all three editions by the same translator who was a Pakistani atheist, by the way. This is fascinating. The most authentic translation of the Quran came from this guy who died on the streets of London, uh, uh, drunk and penniless. But let's not talk about that because... <laughs> oh, but the argument against that would be that first of all, the, the God promised that He will protect the Quran. Every single every single letter would be protected forever, and it will never then, change. Then we, then we shouldn't worry about anything. God's protecting you and me. No, so so that means that Quran, as it is, is protected by God. And also, Muhammad said, "Whatever my community decides, my community will always decide the right thing." So basically, most of what he saying, said, I I haven't heard a recording of what he said, and the people who say he said this. So, came three hundred years after he died. So, if you can, if you can not trust anything from the Hadith or the Quran, then what is Islam? No, I'm saying to be an absolutist. You know what I'm saying is, what one can agree upon, which I, uh, which I would base it on the Mutazilites, the, the huge movement of intellectual freedom and atheism uh, in the among the Abbasids at the time. They yes. did agree that this is the order. There are books. I have the Quran in the right order by Amir Hussein. There is a, but people are scared, doctor. People are so scared of the radical that the conversation you and I are having is being cons if it's if people hear it, it says these are satanic people. <laughs> My point is very simple. When Muhammad had his first companions around him, I mean, if there's any disagreement, I'll concede. There was no Quran. When he went to Khadija, by the way, there's no record of Khadija converting to Islam. We don't have that. She simply accepted him. They the told us that she was the first Muslim. Yes. Yeah. In, in terms of her not uh, uh, of supporting him as a husband mm. and trust, but she was Christian. But his first uh, comrades, whether it's Abu Bakr or uh, uh, Umar came much later. The first tribes, they became Muslim when there was no Quran, when there was no Hajj, no Salah, no Zakat, nothing. One thing only, strict Judaistic monotheism in a pagan city, heavily influenced by Hinduism, 
which is if you ever been to India or know Hindu friends, they do the pera that we call tawaf. They go clockwise like every, uh, uh, you know, physical entity from galaxies to the cells in our body. They all go clockwise. And so did the Hindus. But when the Umayyads came, it became counterclockwise to distinguish themselves away. It's the only movement in the universe that is counterclockwise around the Kaaba. The same kissing of the stones. It's all pagan rituals imported into Judaism that became Islam. But, but, but then if you're, th if you're throwing away, if you're saying we can't, we can't know what, what's in the Quran. No, no, no. I, I concede. You concede the I'm, Quran. I'm, I'm conceding that in the right order, whether it is revealed by... But we, uh, but we don't by, know the order. You're saying we don't know the order. We, I know the order. Okay, you know the order. I, I, a lot of people have done that. Okay. It's, look, it's very simple. If I'm going to read a story like the Old Testament, I've got to start somewhere. Right. And the starting of the Quran is very beautiful. It doesn't say preach and pray. It said read and write. It didn't say any. It said... So, and so you believe you believe in abrogation, though? Do you believe that the later verses apply, um, overrule the earlier verses? Uh, uh, I would concede to that simply because it would prove my point that even like the the the, the slaying the sword verse, the the it's the uh, the Saudis now have come up with verses that were abrogated and increased it from twenty eight to forty four or something like that. If they can do it without having accomplished anything in this world, then I, Tariq Pata, who accomplished migration to uh, Canada with very difficult process, I should be given the same right. I'm as equally idiot or intellectual as the Saudi. I'm not prepared to concede to someone who thinks the world is flat to tell me that the Quran uh, abrogation should be there. Then leave it open. Let's discuss it. Why are they scared about discussing the Quran? So, so what do you think about the verses that um, suggest that we should beat our wives if I, if they don't listen to us? And in they don't more, apply. If, hmm? they don't apply. Why don't they apply? It's in the because Quran. That's what the, that's what the mullahs say. Oh, this not apply now. Okay, fine. You agree? I agree. Put it down in the Quran at the bottom. The above does not apply. But it, but that's a good point. It's not. It's not. The, the, that's not in the Quran. That the the that the no footnote that says that the above does not apply is not then, there. Then, then my point is, I'm going to put it there, and you tell me what the hell you can do about it. Well, they because, say you're not God. You're changing Islam. You that's then, bid'ah. That, then don't do abrogation then. But abrogation then, is allowed in uh, the Quran. Allows abrogation, but it doesn't allow yeah. adding footnotes. No. Then why do they have footnotes? Did Let's go with the present day verse number one. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Malik Yamidin Yaka Nabudu. Okay, one of saying Aiden of Sarat al Mustaqeen. Okay, I'm not trying to convert. It does not say anything against the Jew or the Christian. It does actually at the very end. No, 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 one second. It's the Sunnah. That says it. So this is how devious and this is what we have become as a result of, uh, uh, you know, who wrote that book, uh, 1984, uh, about the uh, people with double think. Uh, uh, oral. Oh, oral, yeah, George Oral. Yeah. Hey, we, we are typical. We can lie and be truthful in the same sentence because we're always lying and tr being truthful at Okay, let's take this first surah. There is nothing in that that says a word. Then what happens? Then comes a hadith, which says people went to the Prophet and said, what does this mean? People who have been led astray or mm. people who have earned your wrath. It could very well be argued. Child rapists, <laughs> smugglers, eh? Uh, mm -hmm. People who uh, 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 run brothels, <laughs> people, uh, uh, smuggling of liquor. I could give you a million crimes, you know, over speeding drivers, drunk driving. I could do anything. They said, No. The Prophet whispered and said, 
Ah, these are the Jews and the Christians. So look at our catastrophe. 52 times a day, a Muslim is supposed to curse the Jew and the Christian, but it's not in the Quran. He, okay. He's making the Sunnah right. meaning to the Quran. Fair point, but, but, but the Quran also says that the Quran is clear. So because that part is not in the Quran, you can't say that this is referring to the Jews and the Christians. But the, but part, it, it, but the, but the parts that says that you, you should hit your wife, and the part yes. that says that you should, the woman that you capture in war, that now you possess them, and you could have, you could have basically raped them, yeah, those, yes. those are pretty clear, and I black and white. And, and oh. when the Quran itself says it's clear, that means that there's no that much room for gymnastics, so this okay. is means yeah. what it seems it means. Let me do some gymnastics. The Quran supports slavery, right? Right. Yeah. We don't practice it. Why? What did the Ayatollahs and the Mullahs and the ugly people going around spreading <laughs> long frocks and guttural accents like Ronald Reagan tried to say? They have only one thing to say. Uh, brother, this does not happen nowadays. It's not applicable. Alhamdulillah, you don't apply s slavery. And I don't apply wife beating. So there is deal or no deal. I, we cannot let them decide what is it. Uh, because ultimately, doctor, what is our objective? The problem in this world today is abject poverty, misery, tribalism that is destroying the lives of hundreds of millions of people whose only hope in hell is this ugly fellow. Uh, who is leading them, like in the Central African Republic, to a civil war? We, we, the, our intellectuals have tried that. I mean, your ancestry is from Iran. You know how many atheists? Half has tried it. <laughs> they, they, what could they do to him? What about that uh, guy, Salman uh, uh, Faris? Salman. Not Salman Faris. Uh, uh, not even Sal Rushdie. No. No, 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 Anna al Haq, he said. Oh, uh, Ghazali? No. Uh, he, Anna al Haq, yeah. Anna al Haq, Sufi Haq guy. I am the truth. And they said, uh, we'll chop off your arms, but by tomorrow, the caliph said, why don't you compromise? But they chopped off his head. All he said was, I am the truth, Anna al Haq. And they said, but that means you are God. And he said, <laughs> but our traditions of opposing the clergy are based in our own selves. Unfortunately, we become fans of uh, Hitchens or unless Sam Harris does something, we, 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 we won't know. Just last week, one of the longest striving atheists in Pakistan died. Not a single uh, quote unquote ex-Muslim from Pakistan would know his name. His name is Jamal Nakwi. He died in a poor uh, cell that he lived in all his life, struggled for, uh, you know, uh, rationalism, scientific reasoning, everything. But his problem was he was not sexy. He was not sexy enough for that conference in London where everybody came and said, oh, what the best thing we can do? Let's strip naked. That's the problem. They go naked because they don't have clothes in uh, southern Somalia or in South Sudan. They don't go naked on a gay pride parade because it's someone, uh, you know, Gandhi once went to a woman saying, your, your sari is too dirty. She said, that's the only one I have. <laughs> How do I, you know, what do I do? Right. So unless we focus that the crime committed in, in the name of Islam, needs to be fought from within nobody else will do it for us by the way the, the sufi that you're uh, mentioning he's as mansur mansur yeah, al -Halaj, right. mansur al -Halaj, yeah. Yeah. By, the, by the way so so if you if you're just saying well let's not apply this let's not apply that why don't we just let how about we just not let's not apply islam how about yeah, we just, that's just fine i i have no problems with okay. people who are my atheist friends i i i would give sanctuary in my house to anyone, it but, takes a lot of courage to be an atheist in Islam. You know that. All my atheist Pakistani friends who are this, but not in the West. That courage is when you are in Malaysia. 
and the government comes up, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting all fogged up over here, and yes. comes up and says, oh, we just found out from the Saudis that the uh, last 1400 years we were just, you know, going around with our atheists. Now we're going to make chopsticks out of them. Good. Cut the limbs, cut the limbs, Allahu Akbar. It just happened last week. Anybody has to defend the fundamental human rights of anyone's freedom of speech. Right. Uh, right. But depoliticizing atheism is what I once uh, mentioned to a Pakistani colleague among the ex-Muslims is air-conditioned atheism, <laughs> air-conditioned activism. I have yet to meet anyone among Toronto's atheists who came out against Sharia law. I came Not out against Sharia. What do you mean? Uh, we had a Sharia law in Canada, okay. and we defeated in 2005, okay. and we did not have a single one of your quote-unquote ex-Muslim friends who came out and said we are against Sharia. But that would let them go back to Pakistan. So nobody criticized oh, Pakistani. Okay. So there are some Iranians who will say we'll criticize Saudi Arabia, not Iran. I can understand because these guys are honest. They're saying, if I go there, I'm dead. But yeah. th there are people going to Pakistan every year because, oh, it is so fresh and lovely to get served in the bed. Yeah. I love that sort of serfdom, you know. And so nobody came. The Kurds, I've never seen anyone. The, the fighting of the Baloch, it's happening. Rice and shutting down my talk, to, uh, which is supposed to be tomorrow. Mm. You can imagine somebody coming up and saying no. No! If it is Sam Harris, then we'll speak. Well, to be fair, I can't go back to you. If I go back to Iran right now, I'll get hanged. So I'm. I, I can't know. Go, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, but you say that. Yeah. So you are pissing on Iran, rightfully, just to be because it is the pits of the world, right? Yeah. And there was Islam under the Shah, there was Islam before him. There was Islam uh, uh, even when the Americans took out uh, Mossadegh, right? Right. So we, we need to be political about how we, whether we are practicing Muslims or atheists. The yep. goal needs to be clear, not atheism or secularism cannot be a goal in itself. Because that renders, the, it's like playing cricket without a fast bowler. But yeah, I mean, I see that there's a top-down approach and there's a bottom down, bottom-up approach. A top-down approach is to go criticize the politicians, but the bottom-up uh, approach, which is something I do, is to try to educate people, right? Yes, and yes. my my ex my experience has been that when I go to, if you go to Muslims and say like, hey, maybe ignore this verse, ignore that verse, this verse, means no, something no. else. That's a that's a very hard argument to make. I, I think okay. me saying like maybe consider just throwing the whole thing yes. out. That's yes. Yeah, okay. Let me let, let a 67 year old <laughs> who's been to prison twice tell you what are the tactics. Okay, okay, okay. My problem is simple. Can we have gender equality and a 40 hour work week in the places where we work, right? Okay. Or issues where, uh, 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 like my neighborhood, is now becoming increasingly women wearing burqas. Neighborhood I, where? In Toronto, where I live. Okay. Wow. I, you know, I'm living in a neighborhood and I go straight into the uh, all these uh, people who say, Oh, I'm so concerned. I, I need to hide my name and ah, bullshit. I go every day. They would slice up my, uh, my throat if they had to. But you look them in the eye. They know they are liars. Hmm. So there's a motto in India, India's national motto, which says truth always rises to the top. You don't have to say it, doctor. You simply have to do it. And the person is going to say, brother, you say the right thing. But you know, you are kafir. You, I need to teach you. Then you say, OK, come on, tell me, which, where is the Quran is the first word? Huh. That's the, uh, in, in, in cricket, we say LBW. The guy wouldn't know what hit him. Because the idiot went and learned Islam from another idiot. If you have to discuss the uh, the uh, there were times when Muslims were considered intellectuals and that was because most of them were quasi atheists. You know, the rationalists basically, if you reason 
a horse cannot fly. Right? right. But if you believe a donkey can, if you put a, a feather, a, a peacock feather up his, uh, you know, backside and a woman's head on top of his head, that's what Iranians did. So the, the Pegasus came to Arabia with no reference in the Quran and somebody said, oh, that horse is going to fly into space, but it needs refueling where? Oh, where the Jews pray. Okay, let's have skid marks of a horse landing in Jerusalem on top of the rock. So to piss off the Jews, a donkey or a horse lands in Jerusalem for refueling. Then he goes straight up. Where in the Quran did it say Jerusalem? Not even a word, not even a horse. But thanks to the imagination of Iranian Persian Muslims, suddenly Pegasus had wings. Now snakes for Christians talk. You know about the guy He came out and told Adam and Eve about the apple. When did you hear of snakes talking English? Or Hindus have a monkey god taking away and he's told go get this weed from that. I mean, he could have gone to BC and got it, but he goes and he says, well, I can't find it. So he says, okay, get the mountain over here. So the monkey brings the mountain. Now, if my grandmother wishes to believe that a monkey can bring a mountain or a horse can fly, I don't have a problem. She's harmless. All right. But, but if an intellectual, if a person in authority believes that a snake can talk, I have a serious problem with that. And there's where I'll confront him. Not to ordinary people, and they got nothing. They can't even get a thermometer. So they believe in God because that's the only thing that gives them uh, peace or, uh, you know, your relatives. So, but not so many. Yeah, but here's the thing though, you're fighting, you're fighting a lot of good fights and you're putting yourself at risk, you're fighting for equal rights, you're, for women, you're fighting for gay rights, you're for, yeah. for, you're for, and you're trying to get people to maybe abandon some parts of the Quran, but the thing is that, and, and these are fights that, that we should be supporting you on, but, uh, and we, and I, and, Please. No, you do. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. Please, please, uh, please yeah, tell yeah. us more. Whenever we fail, we should always be there for you. And people, other other reformers, we should always support them as well. But the pro one, one thing that I just um, I think problematic is that as long as Islam is tied to the Quran, yes. and as long as we keep giving legitimacy to the word Islam and the Quran, those words, not the hadith that you're saying that will came after, the, the, yeah. the Quran itself will always be problematic because it does advocate for beating women or taking them as slaves or raping them. And when we, when we legitimize Islam, we're legitimizing the Quran and, you know, and then you, pe great good people like you that are doing things that I don't think has anything to do with Islam because you are a Muslim then people say like, look, Islam could be good. And then all of a sudden we're giving more legitimacy to this horrible book. Yeah. Let me, uh, 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 most of what you say is correct and makes sense. Let me add that the starting point that many of us in Canada, by the way, it is the least um, uh, hostile place in the Western world for Muslims. And you know why? It's the only place where Muslims took up the fight against the Mullahs. You never had uh, Bridget Gabriel or Robert Spencer or, you know, there's, there's so many people who think, Mama, there's a rapist, Mama, there's a rapist. <laughs> there's nobody here. Why? Because our starting point in just after 9-11, one week after 9-11, I said, this thing's not going to go away. This is a third world war. Because the Islamic belief of the annihilation of the Kuffar, this is that war. Our response is that there has to be a war between state and religion. No law anywhere from municipal to the federal level can have any reference <coughs> to accommodate tribalism, medievalism, Catholicism, Islam, or anything that determines differential levels of humanity. If a religion suggests that men are there to take care of women, as the Quran says so, 
Sorry, oops, I don't buy that. What are you going to do about me? You believe it? Go to your mosque. I am against giving charitable status to uh, the mosque. Why? Any place of worship where you curse Jews and Christians. And by the way, on Friday, there's not a mosque that does not pray for Muslims' victory over Kamal Kafirin. And you know what Kamal Kafirin means? Primarily Hindus, Sikhs, and Buddhists. You know, there's other people, uh, yeah. exotic mm. people, you know. Not, not Ahlul Kitab. Yeah, not. And even Ahlul Kitab, you know what it means? It's not, oh, they had books. Because the Ahlul Kitab were the people who could read. They had Kitab. The Arabs had no Kitab. When they went to Persia, the first question was, the Persian said, what year is it in Arabia? You know what the Arabs answered? What is a year? <laughs> it was cyclical for them. Hmm. Imagine if you took it to a Muslim and said, why is it that Rabiul Lawal, which is the month of spring, comes in summer? There is not a place on earth where Islamic calendar can be tied to agriculture. Hmm. That is why you will never find idiots as peasants in the Muslim world. You always find Oxford University, Berkeley University, uh, assholes who are about, oh, we need to have the proper positions of Islam because they have a bloody accent. You go to your town and do agriculture based on the Islamic calendar. It shifts 10 days every year. So not a single Arab country produced agriculture. Yeah, but but again, but, but again, uh, uh, let me, I, I digress, yeah, my apology. Yeah, yeah, no. Point B, that if your starting point is correct, which is a complete separation between religion and state, right? our universal declaration of human rights, the 1948 declaration, is the biggest gift given to humanity after the catastrophe of the Second World War. And it gives every human being the right to choose their religion or to walk away from religion as they choose. If we take away that declaration of human rights, brother, you and I are going to be on some stake somewhere. I say, Allah, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> a birthday party, like flames everywhere. What? what? Okay, that's true. Okay, but as an atheist, I agree with, I, I, I value those, right? But I used to be a Muslim. And if I had my, the Muslim me here, I would be like, you are putting man's law above God's law. Yeah. I don't, you, you are saying, you're saying like, oh, you, you take your religion to your own home and this country should be run by, everybody should have their own religion and, you know, no, the no, country's I'm, law should be above. I'm a legislator. It's very but, simple. But, much... but I would be like, who are you to decide that? God has a law and then God's an law. And God's law is not limited to this country or that country. God's law is universal. And let's have, a, let's but, have an election. But <laughs> but God. <laughs> but the thing is that God God is not God can't be reduced to. As a Muslim, I would say you can't reduce God to choices of humans. Who, who, humans are nothing to decide. What How do we know we that? Hmm? How do we know that? Why did He create us? <laughs> it's, I didn't ask to be created. He created. Or yeah. how, where do we end it up? We have 500 years of Islamic bullshit. That is why we are in the West. Right. You and I would have been somewhere in Sistan, Balochistan, uh, not being able to breed because sandstorms had not been conquered. These guys believe sandstorms come because they sin. And right. funny thing is that it always comes on the poor. Doesn't come on Trump. Imagine Trump should get a sandstorm somewhere. No. Every time there are Ababil to throw stones, it's some sucker down there who has nothing in this life who suffers in the family. So to me, it seems like this whole problem is coming from Islam. Why not just say, denounce Islam altogether? Instead Why? Of, because what? it doesn't, what good has it done? Every, <laughs> every single good that Muslims have do, I yeah. can't trace it back to Islam. I can trace no, it no, back no. to them individually. No. I can't trace it back to Islam. What good has Islam done? Let me give you one. Do you think that a people that didn't have the letter, that didn't have paper, that didn't have two-storied house, that didn't even have a damn king, 
There's never been a place on earth that doesn't have an idiot king from times immemorial. They produce a people that within a hundred years damn well conquer all of the civilized world. And we are lucky, brother, that the war in southern France, uh, what's his name? He defeated the, uh, the uh, it, everybody says this was a Moroccan, uh, the Arab army. It was actually a Berber army that was defeated. So you are lucky that in Iran, Farsi still exists. Right. You know, there are books written on saying why Arabs failed because they allowed Farsi uh, to resist and uh, appear because everywhere else that they went, they wiped out the local language now. But would you give credit to a man who was able to take these uh, insect locust eaters who never had a second dress to wear to defeat the Persians and the, and the Greeks and the Europeans and the Egyptians? But is that, but is that good? Like, for, well, no, no, okay. no, I'm not talking of good. I'm not talking. I'm talking of a sense of accomplishment. Number two. Well then, well I mean, then Chinggis, but then we have to list Chinggis Khan and, and but he's gone. As, as an accomplishment as well, because with Chinggis Khan, huh? he's gone. He became a Muslim. <laughs> All of these guys. Now you can imagine the guy takes over Baghdad. The Shia betray him. The Prime Minister, the Khalifa, is wrapped in a carpet and trampled by a horse because because even the Mongols believe that if an Islamic Khalifa is killed and t his body touches the ground, there will be an earthquake. The pagan Mongols were, were scared. There was plenty that came out of Baghdad. You cannot dismiss this. It, there yeah. are more atheists that came out of Baghdad because I, of his course, No, I, I don't deny the golden age of... Huh. But so I that, don't. I don't. But but here's the thing. I don't call it the golden age of Islam. I call it the golden age of Arabs because nothing no, they have. Arabs. No, it because, wasn't. Arabs. Well, it, but it, it, nothing it, they it, achieved. Well, maybe it was the Greeks. The, the everything that they got from other places. But yeah, nothing yeah, it, they've done. Nothing they accomplished was because of Islam. Like there's nothing in Islam that you could trace to that was responsible for you know, it was once they invaded a whole bunch of countries any any empire that gets an, a certain amount of wealth all of a sudden becomes interested in science and philosophy and yes. poetry yes. that's a normal way for a for an empire to to no, to not necessarily not necessarily. Even no. the Mongols that were obsessed with destroying something, once they once they became big enough, they all of a sudden become obsessed with arts and stuff. They were before that they were obsessed with only just destroying things. So, so would if, you concede the Taj Mahal is beautiful? Of course. The result of an invasion by Muslims. Yeah, but the marauders <laughs> came, and because but would it not? But would there not be? Okay, but here's the thing: people like look at this beauty, But I'm pretty sure. If religion was not there, we will still have beautiful, gorgeous buildings out there. I, I know, but we would have no Kabristan in India. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it, Hindus were, the Hindus were shocked. What are you doing over here? You burning people. They have 7,000 years. They had not done it. The Muslims came. No problem. We have cities for the dead and we will provide to fill the... I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. no, we cannot dismiss it because when you dismiss something that is very close to the heart of some of the poorest people that exist and for whom when they are in pain and suffering they rely on that drug even morphine is given to people who are in pain okay right. Right. the objective is alleviation of ignorance then esl is taught in a way that Nobody tells the student, you stupid guy, you only know Farsi, I'm going to teach you English. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. We cannot make enemies of the very people that we want. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying we, we, I'm not saying we should make enemies. But he, here's the thing. Even when it comes to the poor, I think we, we lost it to religion because mon religion has took a monopoly over giving people uh, like that something to rely on. And, oh, and no, the, no. the problem is, the thing is, no. the thing is that if religion wasn't there, it would have been replaced with something 
better and more logical. Okay. I, we have we could we could have come with better ways, more logical ways, more scientific ways to provide somewhere for some way for people to have hope and uh, to feel a sense of belonging without an ideology that comes and takes. I've been in the Philippines and, and I lived there for a year, and these are really really poor people, and these are people that are desperate and need hope, and they go to the church, and guess what the church tells them? The church tells them every 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 amount of pes any peso that they give to the church, God would eventually pay them back 10 times. Yeah. So these are poor people that that do need a, a sense of hope, uh, but the, the, the only source of hope that they're getting is also telling them that the little money that you have, give it to the church because okay. you're going to get 10 times back. Yeah, that's because Catholicism in Philippines is from the 15th century. The <laughs> it hasn't things, but they're wonderful people. Give, let me give a counter example. We had a great experiment in uh, atheism uh, in the Islamic world uh, from 1920 to 1990, 70 years, three generations of atheist education in seven republics of Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbek, you know, uh, Kyrgyzia, uh, Turkmens, uh, there were Azeri, uh, Azerbaijan, they were all Muslim, 100% uh, of Muslim background, 0% of Islamic education, and atheism as the official scientific phenomenon. Imagine in Mao Zedong, an atheist kills about 20 million people. And what does that atheism produce if it is done top down? In the Soviet Union, once the republics broke away, primarily because Russia was scared that the population of the USSR turned to just uh, Russia, Muslims would be a majority. So they let the, let the republics go. Today, you have virginity tests being done under Islamic law in Tajikistan. You had three generations of atheists, and as soon as you withdrew uh, and let people go back, these 100% uh, literate, educated, the only Muslims anywhere in the world who are 100% educated, literate college graduates are the Central Asian Muslims. They all reverted back to the initial default position. Compare that to certain areas like Iran, where the poor were not following the imams in the 1979 revolution, they were following either the Tudeh party or they were following the uh, uh, um, Akaliyat or the, uh, you know, they were different. Even in Afghanistan, I know, the poor never followed the imams. In Pakistan, 200 million Muslims, they've never once elected a mullah. Hmm. Why does that happen? Only generals come and impose Islam from the top. It's a natural process. Be patient. There is a great, great wisdom in the Vedas, and it says your 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 right is not to expect. You need to do what you have to do, and things take place. And I strongly believe that reason only comes. Uh, to a person in a particular situation where hostility sends that person back into his or her cave. Look at gay rights. Look at the advancement we made. I remember running for parliament or legislature in 1995. And because the premier at that time had simply caused for civil rights, I was hunted out in that riding by the mullahs as a person who is, uh, the, uh, you know, um, a very abusive terms that don't even exist in English. I saw some videos of you in the streets. People were being attacking you. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was, yeah. Now, all those damn mullahs are walking with who? Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Gay Pride Parade. Uh, These liars <laughs> have to come out and eat up their own crap and then s smile at cameras and say, Oh, it tastes so lovely. I didn't know that. <laughs> Had I known, I would have defended gays forever. They're liars. They're Orwell's 
double thinkers right. and our job is to trigger them into let them walk into the trap don't waste your time uh, trying to uh, uh, lead the blind into 2020 vision get them set eye glasses that they can see you do great work yeah. but why not get 30% return on your investment as, uh, instead of just 2% but i i actually think i actually think i, I actually think that there is a you get a more return on your investment if you talk to somebody a lot of people say like okay muslims are not ready to leave islam altogether what are you really do you really oh, many think? yeah but I, yeah a lot of I them have, have Believe me, I have, I grew up in, 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 I'm talking 1967, then my entire class about 50% were atheists. <laughs> my wife, yeah. my wife is, swears by uh, atheists, these are non-political atheists. Right. But they would say they would tell me Mukh Mafi, and you don't have a brain. But even even among the ones that are not um, atheists, and people are saying baby steps, right? I say, well, the the uh, the intellectually honest baby step, if it's if it's not atheism, is doubt, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. So so, doubt. so it, I, I I just doubt think, is embedded. You can if you work with it, if you consider me your yeah, imam, there is enough room in the Quran to create the doubt that you need for people to be better people. That's all we want. We want people to go rise to their potential, to right. contribute to the society uh, where we could also be have right brothers flying out of Tajikistan. Right now, only thing we produce is suicide bombers. Yeah. Nothing, not yeah. even a cure for anything. You, nothing that you say is wrong. Don't misunderstand me. I'm a political person. My point is a, a, a community that doesn't reason or rationalize, whether they believe in God or they don't believe should not be our concern. There are enough scientists in the West who believe uh, strong uh, uh, Catholics or Christians, even when the atomic bomb was uh, first exploded, the uh, Shiva, Lord Shiva, uh, came up in the utterance of uh, what is it? what is it? Oppenheimer, I think. Did he say that? Uh, the destroyer of the worlds, oh. Lord Shiva. He's something. You look it up. It's a very interesting line. How would an American in the middle of the Colorado desert come up with a Hindu god to uh, associate? So we we are very complex creatures. Atheism. Yeah may work for you for someone else who just has to give an examination an interview to get as an immigrant to canada <laughs> that's my test <laughs> will they go to the mosque ya allah ya khuda <laughs> let me pass my immigration exam See, so we are weak i know we are the, the, here's the thing though it's not just about believing in god it's just it's believing in any, you know, the, the the problem is not that they believe in God. The problem is that the gullibility is there, right? Oh. And and if, if if people are gullible, one way or another, they're going to be taken advantage of at some point. If if that's no, if that's out there, right? So it's not it, the God is just one of the many superstitions. It's the most famous superstition out there. So it's not that we're just ch trying to take the belief in God away. We're just trying to make people not gullible enough to just believe in just everything that they hear. So your what, actions, your actions will make them. It's not your words. Trust me. You, you look, I'll give you an example. Right. There are so many uh, beautiful people in uh, what is called the uh, ex-Muslim Association of North America. I mean, I, I, yeah. I've met with uh, Sarah. Sarah Haider. And Muhammad Sayyid, yes. Muhammad Sayyid. These are young. They, they, they are genuine people committed. You know, it's not that somebody says, hmm, uh, make money like this. No, no. These are real, real genuine people. Now, if their objective, or just as an example, or your objective can be met by alleviation of someone's intellectual or physical suffering by standing with them, in their issues, 
you don't have to be I, the, the gentleman i mentioned uh, professor nakvi who died uh, can you imagine 60 years working just in the trade union movement and one of the few people who didn't ask for a mullah to wash him you know what i have one test for all these atheists and communists and marxists what happens to these guys when they die each one of them wanted the mullah to wash their body how bad is it how hypocritical it is that faiz ahmed faiz the great marxist the great atheist of Uh, uh, the Indo-Pakistani left. Wherever you go, people would be quoting him. When he died, the mullah came to wash him up. I would, I have written down no ugly person, let alone would ever even come close to me. Nobody to touch me, burn me, incinerate me. I won't let somebody dance around me to purify me. But what sort of an atheist? When I he, don't. I don't know what it, what other atheists. I mean, not not any atheist represents their all atheists or or the, the idea of the of God, whether God is real or not, right? Yeah, but but the prominent ones do. Like uh, uh, Hitchens, no. Hitchens is the. I mean, he he was courageous even in his dying days. He yeah, but did. even but even people like Hitchens or Dawkins or Sam Harris, they, they don't represent. I mean, these are good, great people that have produced yeah. a lot of good work, but they don't represent atheism. You know what I mean? I there, nobody. There is nothing to represent. <laughs> yeah, atheism is just a lack of belief in God. That's all that there is to it. And there's many different kinds of atheists. But why is there necessity for when there are such serious problems around? for this to be the prime object this is a side issue we, we learned this through mansur haraj we learned this through so many people uh, in, in india who were uh, i don't know if you ever uh, familiar with uh, saint called bulle shah huh. oh my god every second line uh, was a hint uh, and an attack on the uh, power of god and then he submits and then he rises is beautiful poetry you should ask uh, uh, if you have any sikh friends they might know your pakistanis wouldn't know anything mm. uh, he, that is there there's so many other people who do this but the problems that have been resolved have essentially been resolved in the western world reason good health good environment Uh, uh men and women's equality gay people's equality we need to inculcate those values right whether someone But is an atheist or not can i can i give you an example a story and this is an example that i used right? let's say a doctor comes into a village and she is trying to cure this village from this disease that is spreading and she's trying to sell her medicine but nobody is buying it right so she comes and says to people that look this medicine was made by the fairies in the forest and this has magical powers and all of a sudden people Excuse are me, i just have to take this uh, okay no worries. i got that kissing cousins uh, <laughs> so sorry i didn't mean to no, no okay. worries. so now them. now all of a sudden people are lining up to buy her medicine and then people point at the story look she stole she 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 so uh, she's selling a fairy tale but who cares it's working people are benefiting but after she leaves there's these other people come in and now they have um you know they just have water or just random stuff and like my medicine this is also from fairies in the forest and some people are actually selling now poison and saying saying that this is and she made this idea of fairies in the forest popular and now people are using people's gullibility and selling people either useless stuff that people are paying for or or actual actual poison right i think this, this my 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 argument is that yes maybe in the short run she made people benefit made people benef benefit and that was the easier thing to do and it was it would be harder for her to spend time and educate people and teach people why this medicine works that would be a harder sell but it would have a longer term uh, return on investment because I, when I you when you, you equipped people with the understanding of what's 
what's what they should believe in and what they shouldn't believe in that's the investment that will have a longer uh, return on you know on your investment that's what that's what and this is not a bad when you say the main argument is not god i'm saying the main argument is be, before god the main argument is believing in anything without evidence you know that's what i want to try to get I, people i understand right uh, and that's an excellent example you gave and which by the way uh, i've seen that taking place by missionaries in india who hmm. converting very poor hindu uh, populations to christianity and when people argue with me that missionaries are doing the wrong thing i said well you mistreat those guys and missionaries are giving them uh, a sense of respect while you just spitting on them don't complain that i don't have any people to spit on <laughs> the point is that first step she took was a tactical blunder this is what i'm saying she might she should never have compromised in your example to say to to bring the fairy tale she could have been pushed out whatever it is but i would compromise or would ever say that my point is that their problem comes from their state not providing them the education or health care that's needed these are political issues uh -huh. the moment you look at the problem of underdevelopment of superstitions from a political perspective then you look for an answer it says how do i get these people out of uh, superstition essentially that's what we fight it basically you're saying well, you know when the uh, comet goes across the sky it's not ali stalwar <laughs> the famous <laughs> the shia go crazy so oh that's ali sword in the sky no we got to knock somebody that's a comet you idiot <laughs> It last time it came by Ali was not born <laughs> Baby Ali has a sword it's yeah. and that's in Con Constantinople or what we call Istanbul yeah. our approach has to be political that's all you do depoliticize something and you rot up uh, give, let me give you an example of how much we blundered into this you remember the case of the woman who wanted to become a citizen by wearing and a cap right right that was the time that every sensible person should have come out in support of prime minister harper that's yes, the blunder is that everyone said well he i'm so left wing i'm right i'm blah 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 be elected a guy who goes around uh, basically because he's got a, he's a boxer and a bodybuilder he's humping women around he got Uh, nikabi women on his hands and he's got uh, women uh, who are naked in his lap then he's falling off a kayak and all these uh, coat and coat if we not going to vote right wing suffer him because essentially this war is it's a third world war between fascism based on islam and civilization based on reason outside the political environment people will try to stumble us we cannot win the villagers to our side by saying you ugly people you are so stupid but i've got a medicine <laughs> that cure you i don't mind if people believe in anything that brings them a comfort all i'm saying is don't inflict damage on your children don't send them to schools where mullahs are doing bachcha bazi and raping their Bach. sons it's an institution you know that well, is it every bloody uh, madrasa boys are being buggered by people in the name of islam in wow. india in pakistan in afghanistan in iran you go anywhere right now don't we have is the issue of saudi arabia killing kids in yemen shouldn't our moral conscience not be in the sides of the but many of us are silent you go uh, here i can't convince you i'm willing to hear everything that ex muslim say because it takes a hell of a lot of courage i know that for somebody who especially a catholic can 
There's no consequences. But the Catholic says I'm atheist. Nobody will listen to the Catholic. Ah, <laughs> a Hindu says I'm atheist. Well, part of the Hindu religion is to be an atheist. So you, it's no big deal. When a Muslim says I'm atheist, he's putting his or her life on the line. My point is don't put your head on the line when you can easily do effective work by earning the respect of the very people that you are trying to alleviate or save from this horror that is well in that in that situation they are muslim they're ex-muslim in real they're just they're just not admitting it for safety issues in that situation there, are, there is i know people yeah. with my family i went to india i i people would come uh, women came in burqas to meet with me because they didn't want anyone to know who they are because they're atheists uh, and they, they wanted to reconcile. I said, you don't have to worry about this. You simply have to be who you are. You don't have to. Uh, maybe a mother-in-law is, you know, you're taking that uh, anger out. <laughs> Just relax and be scientific. Raise your children uh, in a rational scientific manner. And in a democracy where we have no fear of being clobbered or being hunted down, that's where we need to be politically involved. We have right now a war going on between Islamofascism on one side and civilization on the other. The parallel is the Nazis. Their fascism was less dangerous than what we are facing. Why? Because both the Nazis and the communists wanted to rule the world. The Islamofascists want to destroy this world. The goal is the annihilation of life on earth so they can take a connecting flight to paradise. And they believe it and they're dying for it. And so, we are few and very few because the only answer will come those who were born in Islam can save the Muslims, nobody else. So, so if the parallel is Nazism, would you? What would you say to somebody saying that I don't want to get rid of Nazism? I just want to reform Nazism. My Nazism is pro-gay, pro, pro, -gay, pro, pro um, racial equality, and I'm still going to call myself a Nazi. And I still think Hitler was a great guy. He was just misunderstood, and people nobody really don't understand that. what Mein Kampf is saying. Now I know yeah. nobody's saying, but what if? People don't, don't are mis misreading the Mein Kampf. I'm a reform Nazi, and these other Nazis don't really understand true Nazism. So this person all of a sudden goes and fights for gay rights, fights for racial equality, and he still calls himself Nazi. Yeah, I, that, that's what I'm, what I'm not saying. He's not point. But my my point is that he's not following Nazism, but, and he's a I'm, good person. But he's prom, but he's prom, elevating he's the name of Nazism. Nobody. Then people would say, "Look at that crack nut." On the street, he's lost his mind. <laughs> but that's, but that, that's, that's what I'm saying about reform. What I'm saying is okay. that we have a political philosophy that we are fighting. This right. ideology is not religion. This is people who don't even want power. They want to destroy life as we know on earth. And it's not a joke. White people think that way. They think. Uh, oh, you know, you don't shouldn't listen to him. He just exaggerates. No, they will finish off. That's why him. Nobody knows because Indians are dark skin. So nobody really pays attention to anything that happens east of Iran. So, for example, Iran has doesn't even have a, anything nuclear. Pakistan has 200 nukes pointed at Tel Aviv. Nobody bothers about Pakistan. Ah, dark skin people, you know, fakirs just begging around cab drivers of New York. That's our image. White people like you, Arabs, they take serious and they're full of words. Iran, Iraq, Arab, easy. Pakistan, Bangladesh, my God, who can block that? So life stops over there. And the real threat we are facing is coming from there. There are millions ready to die. Each one ready to willing. Why would he have there, where the problems coming from? Where the from the reading of uh, of Islam? No, no. But you, you're saying their main problem is coming from countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh. No, no, no. The ideology is coming from Saudi Arabia. Okay, okay. 
yeah and and uh, thank god for iran that 25% of the idiots who are shia uh, actually pose a balancing act and become victims of the sunnis in a very perverse bizarre way i'm i'm making this talk that had it not had it been for example uh, the today or the uh, royalists who would have been in power the the muslim radicals would have targeted iran and and, and labeled uh, shias as jews as they as the belief is that the shia islam is essentially yeah. the jews hiding within islam to destroy it. jews and illuminati and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is so much material out there to destroy in the ammunition dump of the asshole i am saying why do you go after blowing up the big guns where you could get killed just just land a mortar shell in the ammunition dump that is everywhere you can't, you because you cannot and should not take steps that enhance the power of your enemy there has to be a reading of the art of war because without it we will lose this war we cannot afford but, but but okay but the ammunition to the the enemy like i feel like what the reformers are like we have a poisonous tree. i don't call that a reformer no, no that okay. bullshit that is ngo bullshit in which people go conference hopping i'm former i asked these reformers are you willing to reform polygamy have you asked any reformer what exactly do you want to reform ask them there's so many aunties who are reformers now everywhere there's a conference jets go conference hoppers people take podiums what do they do i'm going to reform they go to interfaith meetings interfaith like between donkeys and horses and snakes and monkeys you're going to have a conference so you think you can't reform islam i uh don't wish to reform islam i just want to muslims to see the light and uh, live as human beings and put religion where it belongs deep in the bedroom somewhere so and you want you want them to ignore islam yeah islam has to be ignored it cannot be the basis of a constitution it cannot be the basis of my car it cannot be the basis of uh, which days i pour water on my uh, lawn it cannot be the basis of how this wristwatch runs there's a fatwa against this <laughs> your headphones i'm serious there's a there's a fatwa against the call to prayer on a loudspeaker my ammunition dump is loaded with crap from the mullahs i will use that i don't have to attack poor muhammad you guy i wouldn't even believe if he came here he said what the what is going on <laughs> these are ugly people why would people dress up in frocks have you seen that video where the two saudi pappus take a car and whip it around uh, on the side yeah 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 skip skipping have you seen them play football they catch the front of their frock in their mouth and then they run along with pajamas underneath it that's what i look for these are racist bigots who hate black people call them ya abdi you know ab ya abdi means oh my slave mm. this is an africa is where islam would be growing the arab janjaweed killed half a million darfurs we should have been on the front uh, lines half a million But, in one year how could you how could you convince somebody that believes god is the creator of the universe yes. and he wrote this book for our guidance and it's mm -hmm. a direct word of god yeah um and it, there's infallible and everything in it is a perfect direct command by god to ignore yeah. these words of god because their people have said we can ignore this i didn't say that i want what god said in its order and i want the list of the abrogated verses and i need to be able to tell these people mm. that for god sending this book he should have first sent paper you can't have a book and then in went paper and then you make the guy die and then you have But, this war of apostasy you kill the second prophet you kill the uh, the caliph the third the fourth 
And then who takes over Islam under the Umayyads? It's Abu Sufyan. Yeah, Sheikh, the, 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 the pagans took over Islam under the Umayyads. You know. the, the children of the enemies of Muhammad basically took them. And they took refuge in India. And so Muslims said, we will invade India. <laughs> what? But, oh, they're dark skinned. But, dark but, people. But a lot of Muslims say like, oh, forget these imams and these scholars and all these, you know, people that claim authority over Islam. I'm just going to go directly to God's word himself, right? He doesn't and, know the God's word. But no, that, this, this that is... Bullsh- Show me that guy. Bring me one guy. I was take- one of those guys. No, wait. Did you read the Quran saying Ikra Mirakbek uh, Isma? Yeah, no. when I was a Muslim. I was, no, I was but it was, it's not in the Quran. Ikra oh. Besmek Allah Khalaq is in the Quran. Say in yeah, Shaykh. One second. I, 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 let me pick up. Here's one. Uh, Open the Quran. The, it was at the end of it. In my Quran. Eh? Had, it was at... It in the end. Huh? It is the first word. How I know. I know. I know. It's. I know. But we, we were told. It was at the close to the end. But it, the reason why I said the end is because it's, short, it's a shorter verse. Yeah. So an idiot said that I don't know what a book is. So okay. I'm going to say... This very big, first. This very tall. It's, it's so primitive. The guy said, "I like bumper car, big car, very good for me." Yeah, but, you but take the okay, so I, come, I, make I the come from a Shia background, right? So I, yeah. we also we also really hated Osman, right? So Osman is was we just like okay, so fine. We but we understood. But even though the Quran was you know was canonized by him, we were like, okay, we we understand which verse which verses yeah, came but first. But there's a we, problem. Yeah. You were hunted down, like really uh, like, like criminals and kuffar. There was no place anywhere in the Arab world where a Shia could be a Shia after the great Saladin liberated Egypt from Shias and destroyed the Fatimite dynasty. People yeah. were running all over to India and Central Asia to take refuge. The point, brother, is that, brother, I said, it's almost sounded like an imam. <laughs> <laughs> Allah, brother, I mean, that Ali went to Usman at that time. He said, we have the compilation of the prophets and they say that that compilation was thrown out and some say it is still there in Qum. But the Shias were so scared, so scared of being known as Shias that they are followers of the Prophet's family. Can you imagine a religion <laughs> where the people who say we are from the Prophet's family say, we will kill you. It obviously means that the Umayyads were the pagans of Mecca. And I said, okay, you will do this up and down the way I said, I don't have a video recording of how Muslims are supposed to pray, but this to me looks like sun worshipping. Sun is about to come up, go and dip your head. Why should I have to go through those motions? Who said so? Because the Jews did it. Yeah, yeah that's authenticity, right? If a Jew does it, he's got a book, he's got everything, he's got all this. Actually, Ali Rizvi has a, he always says um, that, you know, Muslims always accuse you of being a Jewish conspiracy and stuff like that, right? But Ali Rizvi always says, well, Islam is a Jewish conspiracy. <laughs> no, it is Islam in Judaism planted yeah. on Arab pagan culture. Yeah. It, it, it is true. He's saying the right thing. Islam <laughs> is 100% Judaism planted on a pagan culture that borrowed a lot from Hinduism. And a little bit from Christianity and ancient Greek philosophy. Well, Christianity is an offshoot of Judaism. What can, what are Christians have? Christians have well, he, he, he really liked, Muhammad really liked Mother Mary. So I think she's the only uh, one that's mentioned. In he has been confused a couple of times as to which Mary we are talking about. Mm. There are two Marys, you know. <laughs> There's one thing about the Quran which is very interesting. And when I do meet Allah, I'm going to talk to him about it. <laughs> they say, they, they tell Muslims, don't make friends with Jews or Christians because they are friends of each other. Are you kidding me? You are saying God did not know that Christians hate Jews? <laughs> 600 years after they were slaughtering every Jew possible, yeah. God came and told the rest of us that uh, Jews and Christians like each other? Yeah. Unless, unless I think, 
change something because we never had the 7th century copy of the Quran at all. I, I, my, I was the 8th century. By the way, don't you have a time limit to this or this is... Oh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'm just going <laughs> to... But my theory, my, 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 my theory, which is based on the hypothesis, is that Muhammad just knew a little bit about Judaism, but not a lot. Because I think he, he wanted to be the Messiah that they were waiting for, but he didn't know that the, the Jews were waiting for another Jew. But anyways... Um, Sorry, I, I won't take you any longer. No, no, no. There, yeah. there are, but there are this... comrades downstairs. I... <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I also hypothesized that it was this was, whole thing was Khadija's idea because she was like a businesswoman and she no, saw her, she saw her husband going uh, uh, crazy. She's like, I'm going to take advantage of this and tell him that you're not going crazy. You're a prophet. No, <laughs> she was smart. Her yeah, brother, she... uh, Ibn Warak uh, was his name. Uh, the, he, Muhammad had good company. You have to understand that he came from very modest backgrounds and rose up within Mecca to be a trusted figure. Um, uh, you know, whatever you may say. And some of the Western apologists for, uh, not apologists, Western scholars of Islam have uh, in, in an effort to bring the Quran into two, um, in its chronology, have produced the Meccan verses as a separate. Mm. So nobody give a fatwa on them. And I, uh, I have asked some of very prominent uh, reformers, I won't take their names. I said, I want to produce uh, a book that's called the Quran as it was revealed. Unfortunately, I'm not an Arab. So I don't have the credentials of authenticity that comes with fair-skinned people. I'm dark-skinned, I'm an Indian, so nobody's going to believe me. And all of these reformers would not wish to touch this. If you can't reform a simple matter of chronology, if you can't agree that two follows one, and after two comes three, if we're stuck at that stage, there is no redemption for you. Go buy a donkey back to where you came from and take that peacock feather, you know, with you. <laughs> Have you seen drawings? Yeah. Oh my. Anyway, it was right. fun talking yeah, to you. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. It's such an honor and thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that. Drop in. Uh, do come over if you're in Toronto. Okay. Uh, I'll take you to one of these demonstrations. I will join you. Please. I promise. I will. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> Bye.